today's electromagnetic world, trust nature's call when it comes to ultimate health. Cell phones, cordless phones, cell towers, Wi-Fi, smart meters. Are you worried about your EMF exposure? There are solutions. Welcome to Electric Sense, where healthy living never felt so good. And now, your host. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Henry, and I'm here today with Lloyd Burrell, author of Long-Term EMF Protection, Start Feeling Better Today, and webmaster at electricsense.com. And today, we'll be talking with Lloyd about dirty electricity, what it is, and how to protect yourself. Before we bring Lloyd into the conversation, let's just remind you that if you have questions or require assistance, you can reach Lloyd anytime at electricsense.com. And you can join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash electricsensehealth. Lloyd, how are you today? I'm very well, Kimberly. Thank you. It is good to hear your voice, and it will be interesting to hear about dirty electricity. We touched on it a little bit last time we talked. Yeah. And I think most of us kind of can identify with the feeling of our home is our safe haven. You know, Mm -hmm. you come home and that's where you kind of let yourself go and you want to relax and feel safe. Um, But there may be something going on that we're not aware of. Exactly. Yeah. So dirty electricity um, is a form of uh, EMF pollution, um, which um, because... Electricity is a funny thing. It's one of those things we kind of take for granted. You know, you don't seem to think much about your electricity supply. Uh, you know, you plug your, your toaster in, your TV, computer, whatever, and there it is. It works. But uh, there are actually different qualities um, of electricity. And herein lies the problem. Um, I don't know if you can remember back when you were at school and you were in your physics class Uh, If you paid any attention, you probably remember it because it was a screen. We didn't have many screens in those days when I was at school, but something called an uh, oscilloscope. And we saw, so your science teacher will have plugged in this this machine. And on this screen, you can see uh, the sine wave, um, which is the sine wave of the electricity supply. And that is all you should see uh, is this nice, clean sine wave. Now, the thing is with dirty electricity, um, this is no longer the case. There's other parasites uh, on there. And so it's a form of uh, high frequency noise, which is called transients and uh, harmonics, uh-huh. uh, which, this, um, w- which we also call uh, intermediary frequencies. There's lots of names for it. But the important thing to, to, to grasp is that it's a form of uh, EMF pollution. And this pollution uh, is in the grid, uh, the electricity grid. Um, and it, but it's also caused by things which we use in the home, things like um, cell phone chargers, TVs, computers, dimmer switches, uh, so on and so forth. And this causes an interruption in the, electric, in the electrical supply. And um, this uh, is what creates uh, dirty electricity. Okay, and just to kind of bring things into to integrate it into the knowledge that I already have, and I think probably a lot of us have, is it kind of flipped a light bulb in in my head when you talked about the frequencies and the high pitch sound. Is that is that the same? Is that sound? Is that like that high frequency that maybe dogs can hear that we can't? Is that all the same thing? It's yeah, it, it it it's possible. Some people okay. can actually hear this. Um, oh. I can't hear it, but some people can. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's the, the and there are machines which can convert it into sound. But it's it's more something which it's in the kilohertz range, and it's something which doesn't really <laughs> mean anything. But there's there's well, if you, unless you know anything about electricity, but for it's between. Uh, what cell phones are operating at, which is a gigahertz, uh, which is uh, one to two gigahertz usually, mm-hmm. and what your and your electricity supply, which is uh, which, as I said, in the US is 60 hertz. Uh, in other parts of the world, it's 50 hertz. So, so that means 60 cycles per second. So that's all it should be: 60 oh. cycles per second. And dirty electricity means we've not just got this nice, clean electricity supply. We've got lots of other things. Uh, which are on there, these, I say, um, transients and harmonics, this, this high-frequency noise, 
and this and this this is the problem and it's actually it's not a new problem it, we've known about this since the 1920s but the problem is it's getting worse because we've got more you know uh, more of these kind of gadgets so if we could hear it it would be a cacophony of sounds rather than this nice clean single note yeah yeah i guess okay. that's another way of thinking very about it, sure. very interesting way to to visualize that so with this going on, is, is it dangerous? Is dirty electricity dangerous to our health? Well, according to the study, it is, obviously. And if it wasn't dangerous, then I wouldn't be talking about it. Right. But notably, there is uh, an epidemiologist called Dr. Sam Millen, who's done a lot of research on this. Uh, and he's found correlations between communities using little or no electricity and uh, other populations using dirty electricity. And the, the communities exposed to dirty electricity had a much higher incidence of many chronic diseases and, and health afflictions, notably things like cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even suicide. And also somebody called Dr. Magda Havis, who I probably spoke about before, who's of Trent University, who's another um, scientist who's done a lot of work uh, in the field of EMFs, but in with uh, dirty electricity particularly. And she's been studying it since 2003. And she found when uh, dirty electricity is, is removed, that there were uh, the, the incidence of uh, breast cancer is, uh, or the risk is, is diminished, uh, blood sugars stabilized in diabetes, and people had uh, improved uh, sleep patterns. So there is very strong evidence to show that it is dangerous. Wow, I, those studies are actually out there. It's in, it's important for people to realize that this is something that's being studied and, and the evidence is there. How, exactly. Yeah, how do you protect yourself from dirty electricity, knowing it's out there and knowing yeah. it's dangerous? What do we yeah, do? Yeah, well, <laughs> as ever, as, as we were talking about last week, seeing is believing, and this is a problem. Um, you don't know. You know, you kind of, you switch your, your, your toaster still works the same whether you've got dirty electricity or not. Mm -hmm. um, the, the impact is, 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 is on your health and it tends to be long term and it tends to be very difficult to, to pin down. Uh, if you do, you know, uh, run into health problems, you don't think, oh, that's because I've exposed myself to dirty electricity. Right. So it, it tends to get overlooked. Um, but it is actually very easy to measure with uh, something called a GS meter, which is a Graham Stetson meter. And we and talked about that last time. We did. We did okay. very briefly. And uh -huh. this meter is a little bit different to the other ones because the other ones are, are kind of handheld things which you walk around with. You can put them in your pocket. And, and this meter, you, you just plug it into the wall, basically. An, an idiot could use it. It's that simple. Mm. I mean, all, all the MF meters are very simple, but this one is the simplest because you just plug it in the wall and it gives you a reading. And uh, so you plug it into your wall socket, you know, whichever room, your kitchen, your bathroom, uh, you know, your lounge or whatever. And um, it gives you a reading. And if it's over 50, then that's considered dangerous. Uh, according to the manufacturers, that's considered dangerous. Um, and if it's if it's uh, below 50, then that's considered uh, safe. Mm -hmm. And so, if, yeah. And if you do get over 50, then you need to do something about it. And the way to do something about it is to, well, there's two ways. Uh, the first way and the best way really is to eliminate those devices which are causing uh, dirty electricity, things like dimmer switches, CFLs, etc. Just really by process of elimination, just going around switching things on and off uh, with your meter, you can figure out which devices are causing this dirty electricity. So that's the mm -hmm. first way. And the second way, and really it's not one or the other, it's kind of you use these in tandem. Um, so you do that first, that's a logical uh, way to go about it. And then uh, you introduce what's called GS filters. Uh, which are uh, basically uh, what you put at the filters which you put onto your uh, electrical sockets and they filter out this dirty electricity. Uh, they filter out that which is considered, which Russian research has shown to be the most dangerous uh, between 4 and 150 kilohertz and which, you know, to, to bring your levels down to safe levels, which personally for me it's between 25 and 30 uh, GS units. Would you recommend that someone skip this step uh, if they wanted to just go right to to 
providing the filters? I mean, whether they have dirty electricity or not, is that something? No, I wouldn't. No, no. No? Because uh, the thing is, well, these filters, first thing is they're they're not totally inexpensive. Okay. (laughs) There's a cost. Okay. There's a cost. And the second thing is, is these uh, filters themselves, they do actually give off quite low level magnetic fields. So you kind of, uh, you, you're dealing with one problem, but you're introducing another. But magnetic fields, as I've said before, are, are localized. They're not like, it's not like cell phone radiation, which travels great distances. Mm-hmm. So unless you're actually next to this, you know, these filters, then it, it's not really a problem. But yeah, it's, it's. As always, the key is really to test and to measure rather than just go in headlong and say, oh, let's do this, let's do that. You know, I'm sure there's a problem because you can't you can't do EMF mitigation based on guesswork. You need to measure and act, you know, in accordance with uh, the readings that you get. Okay, good tips, good tips. And I'm assuming there's information um, at your website about this. Or that you can be contacted at the website if someone Absolutely. has questions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. There's lots of information on there. Uh, and just as a uh, by the by, uh, interestingly, the Republic of Kazakhstan introduced a law in 2003. Nobody's ever heard of Kazakhstan when I say this, but anyway, they <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> they introduced a law in 2003 legislating the maximum permitted levels uh, of GS units in workplaces at 50 GS units. So that's how seriously they take it. Oh, very good. Very good. Is that the first country to do something like that? That is the only country I know of that's done anything like that. Uh, my understanding is they've done it. Well, it's because it's um, my understanding is because the, uh, the there was a lot of Kazakhstan uh, scientists that were involved with the Russian space program. And then the Russians know they've done a lot of research on an, on EMFs. They're a lot more advanced uh, than we are in the West. And so I guess, yeah, for this, they're they're, they're ahead of the game. Interesting. Very good information. And you can download a free report, the uh, EMF Protection Report, at Lloyd's website. It's www.electricsense.com. We are just about out of time. Is there anything else we need to know before we uh, close for today? That, that's really everything. I just encourage you, you know, to take this matter seriously. There's a great book called Dirty Electricity uh, written by Dr. Sam Milham, which you can read up and learn more on this. But yeah, take it seriously, and it's important that you look at this to to minimize your EMF exposure. Great. Thank you so much. And if you're listening to this and think of someone who might benefit from what we've covered here today, they will thank you for forwarding this episode to them. You can follow us at Lloyd Burrell on Twitter, and you can join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash electric sense health. Thanks for listening, and Lloyd, thanks so much. Thank you, Kimberly. Thanks for listening. To join our discussion, visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash electric sense. 